And I said I was going to have a little special treat and announcement to AJ and Mr. Dickey. And that is next week on WOW, you and Commander Spars and Jesse Jones will get that six-way tag team match that you want. Americana teaming with Sahara Spars, the commander, and Jesse Jones. And Samantha Smart will be in the ring for that six-way tag, fan. Samantha Smart can't run anymore. She's got to get in the ring with Americana. They better watch out for what's coming. This is the American way. I don't even know what that means. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. No, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people it, going. It, it. You know, and we all have our 15 minutes of fame, and I'd like to take a couple of my 15 minutes to talk about the rights and the wrongs in the world of professional wrestling. And it is for the WWE Championship. This match is for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of the Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling Podcast with your host, Mr. Green. Thank you for tuning in and enjoying or listening to, I don't know if you enjoy it yet, and listening to the review of WOW. And we are going into episode 16. So WOW is still trucking along, you know, and I, I think they may actually do uh, what they put in the, uh, it wasn't in the paper, but uh, one of the websites, they said they were going to keep this thing pushing uh, nonstop this time. So, holy crap. If you've listened to me give any sort of slack to WOW over the years, one of the biggest complaints that I've had about this company is that they take these stupid hiatuses and... Next thing you know, they're canceled and they don't come back for like two or three years, if that. Uh, and apparently, I'm not going to say that, you know, I put it out into the universe. Apparently, somebody out there was uh, either paying attention or was on the same wavelength as I am. It was like, let's stop taking these breaks. They don't work. It all, all it does is set us backwards and give room for failure and for people to leave now they still have you know room for people to leave because they had these massive gaps and and taping and everything and then of course they lose uh whatever momentum that they had or storylines that's what makes them start falling off the wagon and going in different directions and who knows what um you know i'm i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because i i you know, I'm going off into the review, and I haven't, uh, I haven't done my my due diligence and and done my plug. So, hey, you want to book a wrestling show? You want to do something and, and make it make the world know that you can uh, uh, book a wrestling match as well. Well, then you have your chance. All you gotta do is go to Custom Vixens Wrestling. Dot com custom vixens wrestling.com and right now as i am recording this there are uh, uh there's a, a a shoot coming up in february now i know I, I need to make sure that i'm saying as i'm recording right now because podcasts live on in you know posterity so uh if you are listening to this and you're catching this in within the right time frame, you know what you can do. You can go and you can go on their site and you can see all of the talent that they have available for you to pick from to provide whatever match it is that you want to create. That is correct. I mean, of course, within the realms of good taste, let's not do anything crazy here. But you have the uh, option of picking people like, or picking wrestlers like Austin Madison, who you can go onto my site. If you don't know who she is, go scroll down through uh, the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. I have a match with her 
and Pandora, very uh, lovely young lady, very talented. Malibu, who has a match with uh, the Wode, but between Malibu and the Wode, which is actually very good. And I, I showed some of the uh, highlights of that in the um, the Barefoot Brawl video. You can check that out. Fantasy uh, comes back. Riley Jade, the Black Widow, who's who's been featured on this channel several times. And speaking of big stars, you know, you got Nina Monet. That's right, Nina Monet, who uh, has been on Wild Tele- Television. Who's on Wild Television right now as Siren the Voodoo Doll. So, you know, you, you've got your chance. You know, you can book the match. You know, take Nina Monet, and, you know, she's still Siren in everything but the name. You, you can get her to maybe cast a spell on Riley Jade or, or something like that or put a curse on Austin Madison. Who knows? You can get a... A three-way between the Black Widow and the Wode and Malibu. You know, that that's, the, you know, actually, that's not that bad. I think I, I might need to book that match. But anyway, all of those things and more you can do. All you need to do is go to CustomVixensWrestling.com and you can find that. And if you don't want to book your own match, if you don't feel like you are capable or, or just don't have the desire to book the match, which you know what you can do? If I know you're a fan, you can go to the clearance videos. Go to the clearance videos and you can find all sorts of different matches that you can watch for your entertainment. Charlie Punk taking on Roxanne Lane. <clears throat> Roxanne Lane versus Kat Vaughn. I just mentioned the Wolf versus Malibu. I mean, you know, these are matches like 20 minutes long. So, you know, you, you got, a, got a lot of uh, choices there. I would, uh, that's in the custom, uh, not custom, that's in the clearance bin for lack of a better term but you can also go into the shop and you can scroll down through there and you can find some some other matches some that take place in the wrestling ring some that takes place on a on a uh, uh safety mat some that's in uh an apartment and <laughs> some that's in an arena so take your pick go down take a chance take a look and again if you think that you can book better than some of the people out there in the world then now's your chance to prove it. CustomVixensWrestling.com Did I get it all out? I think I got it all out. All right. So, I think it's time to go into uh, the the match review. Well, not the match review, the show review. And we are going to start this thing off. Uh, what was their first match? I, I, you know, I'm almost hard to see my own damn notes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it starts off with the way they normally do is a recap of issues between Candy Crush and the issues she has against the Dark Side. Now I'm going with the name the Dark Side because I know I used something else earlier, but somebody put it on Wikipedia as the Dark as Dark Side, so that's what we're going to go with. I don't think they're officially referred to as that. I don't think they've ever had a name assigned to them, so we're, we're just going to move along with with this. Uh, but but for those who are not familiar for the purposes of this review the dark side consists of siren the voodoo doll holiday and chainsaw chainsaw i guess being the substitute for the now released princess ozzy which they never really acknowledged or explained how she broke free of their quote spell she just happened to show back up and she was fine which is ridiculous, but anyway. Uh, so, first match is we have Americana versus BK Rhythm. Now, this woman, Americana, still reminds me of Santana Garrett. She's like the Wish version of Santana Garrett. I, I, I cannot be the only one. I mean, her frame, her hair, her... The, the, the clothes that she wears, is, the, the outfit that she wears is similar. Even her finish... Is the springboard flip into a splash? I mean, I cannot be the only one that sees this. And and if it is the case, why are they doing it? <laughs> I mean, I know there's only so many uh, wrestling moves to go around and wrestling looks and things like that, but it, but it almost feels like, hey, we couldn't get Santana Garrett, so we'll get a clone. That's <laughs> good grief. Okay, anyway, um, uh, 
where was I? This, that, I was about to get to the end of this, but I, I think I'm getting past myself. I, I'll just get to the the end of that to say that Americana wins because BK Rhythm in this environment is only there to do the job. I, I've just gone ahead and accepted this from her. I had higher hopes off of Killer Kate, but I just have to accept that Killer Kate and BK Rhythm are two different things. On the independent circuit as Killer Kate, she will probably do fine, and I hope that she gets the location that will do well for her because I don't think that the BK Rhythm thing is going to work out over the long haul. I know it I know it feels good to you know be on national television and all that good stuff, you know, and, and I'm sure for her is it's, it's a dream come true and the culmination of everything that she's worked for. But if she is looking to uh do what I don't know what most wrestlers do I mean let's let's be honest most of it I, I don't want to put the WWE as the end goal for everybody you know because that's that's not a fair statement but if we're going to go off of the this the Steve Austin theory is like if you're not in this to be the top person then why are you in it you know uh I don't see her getting to be a top person at the rate that she's going she's just she's just fodder she's just there and every time she gets into the ring except with the exception of one match she's going down in defeat uh so that happened and at the end of the match and you know i forgot to say that you know david mcclain made some lame hip-hop jokes at the beginning of the you know the beginning of the uh match which was uh, I, you know, it was one of those things that I was like, well, could y'all just edit that out? Because holy crap. So I was like, I'm sure he has no idea what he's talking about when he goes in, other than the people that he brought up from like 30 years ago. <laughs> he's like, yeah, the Sugar Hill Gang and LL Cool J. I was like, okay, look, I, yes, LL is still around. LL is still, you know, he's still the man. And he's still, you know, but I don't think he's dropped no albums in a while. And he's mostly known as an actor on NCIS these days. So I'm, I'm not sure if that uh, really qualifies. Anyway, now, uh, Dave McClain, jokes aside, is not the guy that I'm going to look at as the, an authority on hip hop or hip hop culture. Uh, we, we will just move on from there. Uh, you know, I guess a side note to this, because I, I say it. Oh, I've said it a couple of times. I really wish, and this is not a shot against David McClain, but I really wish that he would allow some of the people that work for him to do some of these other jobs rather than him taking them all up. You know, it, it just it just strikes me like he's eating up the scene all the time. He is the centerpiece of them doing commentary. You know, because his, his, you know, his voice and Stephen Dickey's voice are somewhat similar. So there's there's a couple of times in that that you may not be able to tell the difference between who's making the call or not. But the only time that the commentators booth gets any sort of uh, attention is if they go and give attention to David McLean. You sing AJ Mendez, who should have been featured a long time ago. You seeing her or Stephen Stephen Dickey is just coincidental. They don't feature them at all. They're just you know cogs in the wheel. Uh, I mean, at the come on, at the very least, AJ Mendez is a far bigger star than anybody else on that roster, and you couldn't take the time to feature her in something. I mean, just, just a sit down interview segment. Why did you stay away from wrestling? Why did you leave? What was your life like outside of it? We know that you wrote a book. We know that you did comics. You know, just something. Sit down and just talk to her about what she has done. <sighs> but they wouldn't do that. So anyway, yeah, I, 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 I digress. I get off of it. So at the end of this match, Dave McClain, again, doing another job. He comes in there to do the interview, too. Can't, can't give that to somebody else. And he's also the general manager and he's also the host that starts off the show every week and he's also the guy that 
that string stuff together if they do a, a, a segment piece of best of. Too much. <laughs> it's too much. Give it. Give somebody else the job. Let them do it. Stephen Dickey is fine. He can. He can call the show. I'm sure him and AJ, a two-person booth, would be fine. Uh, so Dave McClain comes into the ring and he makes this announcement for a six-person tag. The question that I had here was why make this announcement with Americana when she was not the crux of this angle to begin with. The angle began through Jesse Jones, which I still believe this was, I don't want to say a mistake, but it's certainly out of the blue, at least for me. She just suddenly turned babyface and like, ah, you know, I didn't. One thing I don't like you people, but one thing we can all agree on is I love this country. I mean, the the, the stuff that you do if you want to win the crowd over, and, and we support our troops. And I won't, I'll be damned if I stand here and let somebody beat up on one of our troops and blah blah blah. Uh, so that was a couple of weeks ago when Jesse Jones comes out and she saves Commander Spars from her, I guess, former partners. I don't know the disciplinarian and. And uh, 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 Samantha Smart and Ice Cold. But again, that was Jesse Jones's fight. She came out there and saved Spars. And then she got jumped, she being Jesse Jones, by the disciplinarian and by Ice Cold and by Samantha Smart. And then she demanded a match. Hey, I you know I want to let us because when she got jumped, it was Americana and uh, Spars who came out to save her. So that's fine. And then you know she gets on the microphone like, hey, you know this basically has gone far enough. I want to match David. I'm not asking. I'm telling. Give me a you know give us a match against you know the the, the I don't know I don't know they they don't have a group name. <laughs> So the disciplinary, the, the, the smart crowd, I don't know. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to let that one slip. <laughs> uh, hopefully I've uh, found that and bleeped it out. But anyway, um, so th- the angle is built around Jesse Jones. <laughs> the angle's built around her, and it should have been her that got this information you know, because that is where it is centered on. That is where the heat is at. So Dave McClain comes in like, hey, you know, you guys are going to get your match. I'm going to make it official. It's going to be a six-person, you know, tag match. You and Spars and Jesse Jones against Samantha Smart, Nice Cole, and the disciplinarian. And what do you say? And and, uh, a a man... She is a terrible promo. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't say it any better than that. I, I, I wish I could. And I wish I could be nicer. But she is just a terrible promo. Her response to this thing was, all right, I mean, yeah, and that's the American way. Like, what? What does it have to do with anything? <laughs> that's the American way. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? It didn't answer the question. <laughs> it didn't say that I'm ready for this. And, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of my team, but we're going to take it. It's nothing. You know, they need to learn to let nothing. <laughs> we're going to teach these people to let nothing like that. It's the American way. It's like they to- they gave her a script and said, hey, just memorize this. And, you know, when he's done, just say this. That was just ridiculous. If you can't get out there and at least make some sort of halfway decent comment after being told that you have a match that allegedly you've been pining for for about two weeks, then you probably do not need to have a microphone put in your face. I mean, I I know that WoW has this tendency of, well, 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 we'll make a script and you can act and all this other nonsense. But, you know, I've said this since the beginning of doing this podcast for this season of WOW, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> if they intend on doing what Genie Bus wants to do, like, hey, I want to take this show on the road and make them, you know, stars and give girls a chance who don't have the opportunity to, to 
compete in their own given field, which is stupid. <laughs> so if they, if they can't win at tennis, then just be a wrestler. If you can't win at gymnastics, then be a wrestler. That is just absurd. But anyway, uh, that's what she wants. But this is what I was saying. I was like, if you don't give them the chance to learn how to do this, that is what you're going to get. And that was just awful. It was two seconds of a promo and a promo that didn't make any sense. That's the American way. Didn't answer one thing in what he was talking about. Didn't even acknowledge one thing that he was talking about. For her sake, I hope they did just edit it, whatever she said, out. You know, at least it would it would make me feel some sympathy for us. Like if she if she came back and said, no, I had a whole promo, I answered it, and this, that, and the other, then that's what he cut it down to. You know, if that were the case, then I would feel bad for her. But if it's not, then she's a terrible promo. And Wow should do something about that. They either need to let her go and practice and work someplace and learn how to speak on the microphone, or they need to give her better material and say, remember this, and when he's done, repeat it. <laughs> She's wooden. She doesn't give any sort of facial expressions. She hardly looks like she even wants to be there. It's just... Uh, it just, it just wasn't, you know, for me, it wasn't good. I know some people out there that's reviewing this, like, oh, this is great. But, you know, I'm sorry. I, I can't bend over backwards and try to make this sound better than what it is. It wasn't. And the other thing was, is this was presented, as David McClain is talking, this was presented like Samantha Smart has been running away. You know, like, and we're gonna, I'm going to make sure that Samantha Smart is in the ring too. Okay, yeah, on paper, but she's the manager, right? And that should be the case of, okay, she, they're making her participate in the ring against her will because she's interfered and she's cheated and she's done all this stuff, none of which is true. And the unaired pilot, well, not unaired pilot, unaired season of WOW, she pretty much voluntarily got into the ring. They started up an angle that didn't go anywhere. But they started up an angle where she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to show you how easy it is to win. And, you know, she won off of two moves after the disciplinarian did like 90% of the work. And so that angle didn't go anywhere. But now they're doing this different angle with the, the old, we'll force the manager into the match angle. But that works when you have a manager who has, A, interfered constantly to the point that people are ready to see them get to come up as, and B, that they've tried to get them in the ring on a couple of occasions, but they keep getting away. Or they, they tried to get them to come up as, tried to give them a punch in the face, tried to corner them in the ring, tried to catch them in the, in the backstage, but every time they try, they come up just a little bit short. That is what, you know, that angle usually stems from to get people to pop when the manager gets their comeuppance. This is rushed. This is a rushed angle. If the premise of it was to get, you know, hey, we're going to, you know, get a pop off of bumping Samantha Smart, then this is rushed. It was rushed to begin with that they just turned Jesse Jones' babyface out to clear blue without ever going back to acknowledging her, uh, quest for the tag team championships it just got dropped she she had the tag team championships in that unaired season of wow she had a legitimate gripe you know and she was going to try to find her partner and all that stuff and none of that took place they just she tried a couple of times and then it just got dropped it just it just went away so all of this is rushed in in my opinion and Americana is the last person that I would have taken that to, especially when I got a Jesse Jones who knows how to get on the microphone and knows how to speak. Uh, if you feel that Americana did a good job in this promo, please leave a comment or send a message, something. Let, let me know because I don't see it. I don't see it at all. And I, I could barely get facial expressions out of her. So that that's just me. So anyhow, uh, next match or next segment is Robbie Rocket versus Keita Rush. Now I want to say that this is probably 
the best match that I've seen Keita Rush involved in. Even though she is right there with BK Rhythm and Steffi Slays in the WoW universe. And that her job has now become just show up, do the match, take the fin, take the pin or the submission or whatever, and move on. That that is basically what she's down to. Um uh, that aside, I, I still think that the match was good up until the finish. Uh, there's there's a couple of times where you could look at the match, and despite the fact that it's edited, you can see some things were not as crisp as they should have been. Um, that happens. I mean, it, it's wrestling. Uh, it's not as easy as it's perceived, and that happens. And I and you know I'm not entirely familiar with uh, Robbie Rocket's work, so I mean she seems pretty competent and she seems very comfortable in the ring. Uh, I, I would say you know a little bit more natural than probably Akita Rush is. You know she she just moves very smoothly for the most part. However. Uh, there is a quote that Dusty Rhodes said, you know, apparently uh, from one of those old tapings in at, at TBS when somebody did something, in this case Bubba Rogers, did something that they shouldn't have done. And Bubba Rogers, for those of you who might not, you may be more familiar with him as the big boss man. Uh, and that quote was, do not do shit you don't know how to do. <laughs> don't do shit that you don't know how to do. And that's because he almost hurt somebody when he was uh, in the ring with them. This is one of those cases. As good as uh, Robbie Rocket appears to be, and I, I I like her, I'm not entirely sure what the Robbie Rocket thing, because normally when they had these gimmicks in, in WoW, it's pretty much on the nose. But, but I'm not sure what the Robbie Rocket thing is. It's not like she's got like a little rocket ship, and I'm glad of that. Don't Don't get me wrong. I am glad that she is not just a cartoon character. I mean, she has, the colors are very bright and she could probably be a cartoon character, but she's clearly not uh, an on-the-nose character like, hey, I'm going to take off and we're going into space. And, you know, she's she's clearly not doing that and good that she's not doing that. Uh, but at the end of this match, despite how, how it was moving along, Rocket is going for the finish. And in this case, the finish is a package power driver. If you haven't seen a package power driver before, it is where the wrestler takes their opponent, sticks their head between their thighs like they would do a normal power driver. But instead of grabbing them by the waist, they kind of get them at the bend of the knees and they hook the knees in to where their legs are uh, how can I say they're, they're kind of folded in as they're being lifted upside down and their hands are also somewhat uh, positioned against their body as well so when you're taking that you you're you're already at the mercy of the person that's doing a normal power driver, but you're really at the mercy of somebody doing a, a package power driver. Uh, the only person I really seen that did that consistently and well was uh, Kevin Owens, uh, Kevin Steen, for those of you from back in the Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor days. Let me uh, pronunciate. Uh, she, uh, Robbie Rocket, got rushed up for this, and. Because of the edit, it's hard for me to tell where it went wrong, but you could you could see it went wrong. Like she lost her, either she lost her grip and she fell over, or she st- or Rush was coming down and she had to she being Robbie Rocket had to adjust. But this is one of the cases. Don't do it if you don't know how. Just just don't. Because she, I mean, legitimately, she could have paralyzed that woman if if that power driver had gone astray. I mean, it, you know, you've got little to no protection there, and it, and all it takes is coming down on your neck. You know, did 
if that's not her assigned finish from this point out, they need to just take it away. Like, don't do this no more. You know, I appreciate the match. And again, it's probably the best match that I've seen Keita rush in. Uh, I would like to see her have more competitive matches like that going forward. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But uh, in this case, she looked good up until the end. That pile driver, that package pile driver just ruined the finish of that match. And and truthfully, it's very close. It's, that was very close to hurting somebody. And this is one of those things where you, you got to go back and you say, because I've said it a number of times. I've heard other people say it about other programs or whatnot, and I know that some fans out there don't tend to get it or they they just kind of ignore it, but this is what they mean when they say this person isn't ready to be on national television yet. They're not, you know. Some of these people that have showed up at WOW have little to no wrestling training or you know, very limited wrestling training at best. And whether that be they're not prepared to get in there ring-wise, whether that be whether they're not prepared to get in there personality-wise or persona-wise, or the ability to enunciate in front of a camera or a microphone or whatever the case be, whatever one of those elements that they lack, by the time you get on a national platform, you should be fairly polished or at least getting there. And... This is one of those moments where I'm like, I'm not sure how polished she is. I mean, time will tell, but I'm not sure. But just taking somebody and training them for six months and be like, all right, well, let's just go on TV because I I like the way you look isn't isn't always a good idea. And if you're going to do that, then she probably should be in the ring with people who are more experienced than her. Uh, both, And that comment goes both ways. It goes towards Keita Rush and it goes towards uh, Robbie Rocket. Even though I think Robbie is probably, you know, fairly trained, she she probably could use being in the ring with some people who could match her. Um. So anyway, moving on. Uh, there's a Candy Crush promo. This is another recap of Crush's route of revenge, is what I called it. And the video sets up a match against Holiday. This puts, you know, Crush at odds against all the members of the dark side because she's calling them all out. So the next match is Candy Crush and Holiday. And it was a fairly even match. Uh, <clears throat> this came off as a fight against the group rather than just Holiday. I mean, of course, when you're looking at the match, it's Crush and, and Holiday. But what winds up happening is that in the middle of the match, Siren pops up on the... Uh, big screen which sits behind the uh uh the fans <laughs> i guess that that's probably largely for you know tv purposes because i can't imagine that the fans sitting there is like I, I can't see what's going on this is behind me unless they have another monitor someplace else where they can see it and they probably do i, I can't i can't imagine that they would stick that up there and for the for television and just be like, ah, don't worry about the people in the audience. So I think they got more live uh, monitors that they can see. So anyway, Siren comes up on in the middle of the match with a uh, – I, I shouldn't say Siren comes on. I, I, I'm thinking about a different match. Sorry. So let's, let's, let's rewind that. She comes out in the middle of the match. Hey, now she did show up on the screen with with one of uh, Candy Crush's thing. I was I was thinking about another one. She started doing the tarot card thing, so I apologize for that. That was a that was a goof on my part. She comes out with the gloves around her neck, and there's a pair of gloves that's already hanging because you know that uh, the whole deal started because Candy Crush's gloves got cut up. And assumably she got her gloves back when Chainsaw threw them in, and they were all shredded up and so now when she comes out to the ring she's got these gloves and they got you know very visible stitch markings in them and we've assumed that those were the the gloves but now you got siren comes out laughing with another pair of gloves and she takes the uh, uh takes the other gloves in the middle of the match and of course this is a this is a distraction 
And Holiday wins with the distraction spine buster and boom, boom, boom. She gets to walk away with the win. So now Candy Crush cuts a promo after the match, and she, you know, much better than Americana, but not a not a great promo either. She Candy Crush always looks to me like she's on the verge of just breaking down and crying. All the time. Every time I see her is always this look of despair and I don't know, uh, just just tears welling up in her eyes and all this stuff. And then when she does what they're clearly trying to force as some sort of catchphrase, it is not good. The let's go. I was like, uh, no, it. It, that, it just doesn't work. And I don't, you know, other than the signs that they give people when they come in, like, hey, hold this sign up. <laughs> other than that, I cannot imagine anybody walking around like, hey, let's go. I mean, people say that al- already. <laughs> so I'm not going to credit Candy Crush for forwarding that. Uh, good grief. I just, I, I wish that she presented a little bit more naturally and that she didn't always look like she was, her feelings were hurt. Like I get it. And I understood it the first two or three times, but it's like every confrontation, every time she speak to somebody since she's had those gloves destroyed, she's always in the middle or on the verge of just starting to cry. Keita Rush tries to give her a pair of gloves to make up for it. She looked like she's starting to cry. Uh, Chainsaw throws in the gloves that shredded up. She looked like she's starting to cry. When she says that, you know, hey, I'm going to get even, she looked like she's starting to cry. And like all the time, she looked like she's starting to cry. You know, at this point, I'm just ready to say, hey, look, just just say I'm, I'm about to get even. I'm tired of this. You know, and that essentially the the essence of her promo is like, I don't know why they chose me. I don't know why they're picking on me, but I'm ready to go through all three of them, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, that that's basically the crux of what her promo was. But uh, I, I just I just wish she had a little bit more stern, uh, 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 how do I want to say that, a, a, a more stern delivery. That's what I what I think. Um, next segment. This is the Fabulous Four segment. Okay. Shot very well. Looks great. Does not look like it was uh, uh, caught on camera like some sort of found footage. This, this looks... Absolutely like TV, and it looks staged. Now, you know, that's that's wow, and I can't really knock them for that because that's what they do. Uh, so despite the fact that this looks like this is all contrived, we'll just go with it. So the Fabulous Four, in this instance, Lana Starr, Colson Twins, and uh, uh, Penelope Pink, Show up at a country bar. We'll just call it that. Uh, and it looks like they're meeting Vicky Lynn for the first time. That, you know, because one of the, the twins gets up like, hey, I told you I, you know, who this person was. I mean, it, basically, she's given the reasons why they're there. And uh, Lana's asking questions like, are you sure we're in the right place? You know, so the first thing that came to my mind is like, wait a minute. Didn't Lana introduce Vicky Lynn already? This already happened. What what was going on? So that was my first thought is they're showing up to meet somebody who's already been introduced on television. Uh, and this happened about a week ago. So I was like, I, I didn't understand what they were doing with, uh, all right, we're going to meet her. And they go into the bar, which apparently in this universe, Vicky Lynn owns, and they show her tossing out some rowdy customers like, ah, right, you and you, get out my bar, and you know, that that type of thing. 
This whole segment is here essentially just to show how tough Vicky Lynn is and to have introduced her if they had done it in order. The only thing that even remotely saves this segment of being out of sequence is the voiceover at the end of, I think it was Stephen Dickey saying, and that's how they met. You know, because they didn't put any graphic up saying, hey, all right, this the Lana Star provided footage of, of how she met Vicky Lynn or, you know, something like that ahead of time, uh, which I think would have been probably a little bit more effective than just, and that's how they met, you know, put it ahead of it's like, okay, look, you know, we, we've seen the fabulous way because, again, going backwards, not only have we met Vicky Lynn and Wow Land, but they've already been established as a team. Lana came out on television and gave them all jackets and labeled them the Fabulous Four. It, this is already a thing. So to come back and be like, all right, well, you know, now we're going to show them. Part of me thinks that they just do this because like, hey, look, we got to fill up the hour. We got to put something in here, regardless of whether it's out of sequence or not. We'll just do a voiceover. That's what it feels like a lot of times with, with me and, and their show. <clears throat> but um, the segment looked good. It, it, I know what the purpose of it was. You know, it was just to pass off Vicky Lynn. And again, if they had done this in order to introduce her to the viewing public. But, you know, it is what it is. And, and I think it, it, it would have worked out a little better if, they, if it was a little bit more structured to that. And they planned it like, all right, look, we're... We're going to cut to this uh, promo or this footage that Lana Star insisted that we run, you know, showing how the Fabulous Four officially came together. So roll the tape or, you know, whatever. But that didn't happen, so, you know, we, we have to take it for what it was. I, this is this is clearly out of sequence and, and only saved by some – Five second voiceover that they threw in at the end. The main event. We go to the uh, last segment of the episode. This is Penelope Pink with Vicky Lynn McCoy, who they who we just met, you know, apparently. Uh, with Lana Star coming out as the manager, and they are taking on Foxy Fierce and Tiki Chamaro. There is no doubt who was going to win this match <laughs> when they walked out. Yes, if there's anything that I know that Foxy Fierce and Tiki Chamorro have shown since being on this show is they've shown they can lose consistently. There's almost no real guesswork here. In fact, I put that in my note. I was like, guess who won? Question mark. Uh, this match was, here's a showcase of Vicky Lynn. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it's there for. She... She is positioned clearly as the group's enforcer. Um, the match gets ended with uh, when Penelope Pink hits the pretty in pink, which is like a float over cutter. So apparently she's dropped the, the whole knee shot thing, you know, pink nightmare or whatever they called it. And uh, she hits this on Fox Appears, one, two, three, you're done. Not really much to go, to go into it. That, like I said, this is mostly a showcase for Vicky Lynn, but but of course we have Penelope Pink as as uh, seemingly the chosen uh, next champion. I mean, I don't know if she's going to win it directly off of the beast, but she seems like she's next in line. They are pushing her as a top heel. They have protected her more or less, and she now has a group around her with arguably the top manager in the uh, company. If you'd asked me that a couple of weeks ago, I would have said Sofia Lopez, but I think Lana Starr is really closing that gap. She has found what she, in my view, is better at. She's better at being a manager rather than being a wrestler. I don't, I don't you know, I think she was into being a wrestler and she was willing to do it. I just don't think that was her first love and was not really wanting to go out there like, all right, I'm going to take my my time and, and you know, learn the wrestling circuit. Wow is where her wrestling starts and stops. 
But uh, her no longer being in the ring and being a manager, I think it suits her better. So uh, the Fabulous Four win, and then Lana Stark goes on and addresses David McClain. She goes over to the commentary booth, and he gives her a microphone, and, and you know she does the whole "All right, David," and you know what? This is just the beginning. <laughs> what I don't understand here is is this a feud between Lana Stark and David McClain? Because I, you know they they did something similar to this when. They started a while 20 years ago or 22 years ago. Uh, I don't know why this would be a feud to David McClain. This just goes back to the same thing I said at the beginning. He, he's he got too much. He's, he's chewing up the scenes. Why would she want to be involved in a feud with David McClain to begin with? What do you have to gain from this? Her gains in WoW are money and championships. I don't care how different you change the wrestling landscape. That is usually what it comes down to. Money and championships. The championships usually facilitate the money. And if you want to throw in power, you can uh, you know, do that too because we're the champions and we can be on top of the card. We'll always be in the main event. We'll always get the uh, you know the press following us when they want somebody to represent the company because they can't do it without the champs. You know, if, if those were the cases, you know, I, I, the, those are the things that wrestling always kind of leans toward. I don't understand what they are attempting to uh, illustrate here. I mean, I, I I I just I don't see where this is heading. Like you know, that what what could what could be the payoff with being in a feud with Dave McClain? He can't get into the ring, and what is he going to hand pick some opponents for them to take on? I mean, you know, where where is that going to go? So uh, I I guess I have to tune in again to see if they do anything else that that will illustrate or explain this. Which a lot of times I'm I get very concerned because they don't. Explain sometimes. Um, this is a serviceable episode. It does what it's supposed to do. It it, it just didn't give me um, any surprises here. Like I said, when you got BK Rhythm versus Americana, and Keita Rush versus Robbie Rocket, and Candy, well, you know what? No, I take that back because Candy Crush versus Holiday it did surprise me. I would have thought Candy Crush would have gone over. But they still... Pushing the, uh, uh, the the angle, so you know, bravo for them. And then Foxy Fierce and Tiki Chamorro versus the you know fabulous four, two uh, half of it at least. Uh, Three fourths of this show was not a shock at all, <laughs> and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, predictability does not mean bad. So you know, I want to make sure I put that out there. It does not mean that I didn't enjoy the match or matches. Uh, the matches in themselves were fine. What I had a problem with was this aftermatch stuff. The terrible promos, the promos that didn't make any sense, having stuff shown that's out of sequence, things like that. Th- those things were the ones that, you know, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not feeling that necessarily. So the last real thing that I could point out with WoW uh, I think, and you know, I just said Penelope Pink seems like she's you know the next chosen. I would like to see that, but you know, because the beast, that whole thing, you know, we talked about during the uh, recap episode that she had, where they did the whole hat on the hat thing, where you know she already had an injury, so we just do another injury angle. Um, when that took place. I thought, what angle is she going to be involved in? Because they clearly took a swipe at her just to kind of keep something going. But where are they going with this? Because when she was gone, whoever had an issue with the Beast, they didn't say a word. Raina Del Rey did not get on the microphone and like, I, you know, I'm waiting on the Beast to come back because we got a score to settle or something like that. 
Tormenta or nor Sofia Lopez got on the microphone and said anything about, hey, uh, you know, we taking credit for the bees being on the shelf. We deserve the championship. No one made any sort of comments towards the bees, you know, the people who were participating in that. And it's cooled her off. It, it's cooled the beast off significantly. I mean, not like she was, you know, some sort of red hot superstar, but within their universe, she was, you know, she was still cooking. But once she went down, everything that was around her went down with it. And, you know, I, I'm sure they can reestablish things, but I'm having a hard time imagining, like, do I really want to go back to the Beast and Tormenta and Beast and, and Del Rey, especially when there's really nothing that has gone on with them? You know, there, there's been no comment. There's been no, ha, ah, we got you. You know, nothing, nothing like that. It's, it's just kind of disappeared. And the only thing that they did do that kept it in, you know, I guess the consciousness of the fans was they kept recapping the injury. Our champion, the Beast, went down to an ankle injury, and they would show the footage. But, you know, they, again, they didn't really do much beyond that. They didn't say, all right, let's get Tormenta in here and do a promo or have Sofia Lopez do a promo for her or <clears throat> Reina Del Rey uh, getting in and say, hey, look, you know, that's just that happens. It's the cold of the streets. You know, my only regret is that I didn't do it myself because I was, I was ready to destroy the Beast, and she got lucky that Tormenta came off and, and accidentally beat me to it. You know, something. Now, granted, I understand that these things are taped, and they're taped months in advance, so it's not as easy to go in there and just switch stuff around. I get that. But if, you know, if I were operating WoW, one of the things I would be saying is like, hey, um, when the show is going and we are shooting this stuff, and I know we're taping months apart, if you are signing on to work with me, I need you to at least cooperate with me enough that if something changes, you can send me a promo. Because in most cases, a good promo might explain some of that away. You, Everybody's got a cell phone. All I'm asking you to do is either get somebody to hold it, or you buy a tripod, or you know you just do it selfie style, whatever. But you send me a promo that I can air on my show to help connect the dots. And they have not done that. I don't think they've done anything that helps connect the dots. They wind up doing it late, much like what I just said with that uh, Fabulous Four segment, where they just threw in a voiceover at the end, like, all right, well, that's it. So, the, the, the whole Beast angle seems cold. Penelope Pink, in my view, feels like it's, it's the next thing happening. And considering that they've slotted in Vicky Lynn McCoy again, who apparently is the muscle or the enforcer here, I can definitely see them moving away into a match with Vicky Lynn versus uh, the Beast. Or perhaps the bees against both of them, you know, in some sort of handicap or something like that. Uh, but going backwards, it, it, I'm not saying that they won't, because you know they they may just like, all right, yeah, we'll just pick up where we left off. That that's possible. It just feels really cold. It feels cold, that, you know, to have the bees go right back into this thing that they haven't talked about in three or four weeks, if not longer. So. But we'll see. I mean, maybe maybe they can get this thing going and, and they can heat it up again. I don't know. Time will tell. But that was the entirety of the show. And uh, again, serviceable episode. Three out of the four were, were inter- uh, not entertaining, were, were uh, predictable. The, the third, the fourth actually surprised me. Um. Uh, so yeah, man, is is it was interesting to watch, but it does have its issues in pre- presentation and continuity. 
Those have been the two things that have plagued WoW since they have returned. Presentation and continuity. The continuity is terrible. You know, on occasion. I mean, they're, they're far better now. Again, I, I do not want to take anything away from the production companies on it now because I think they've done a, a bang-up job. They're far better than uh, what the original production company was doing. You know, whether that be they changed the companies or they got somebody else with a different vision. You know, whatever it is, is is, is better. Uh, so I don't want to take anything away from that, but, you know, you, you can, as a production company, you can only do so much when you're not in charge of it. So, uh, having this stuff appear on television out of sequence, that's a no no. They should try to work that down because it ain't the first time that they've done it. Okay, so that's it, folks. That is the full on review of WOW episode 16. Thank you for tuning in to listen to all of this and again you know if you are so inclined and you want to uh try your hand and maybe booking your own stuff hit up custom vixens wrestler.com you never know you might have a next five star match on your hands <laughs> depending on who you book that is uh also any uh statements comments questions whatever leave them below or you could shoot me an email you go to the website and uh, hit the contact button, and that'll shoot right over to me. Uh, that website, WPNWrestling.com. WPNWrestling.com. And, of course, on my site, there's wrestling there pretty much 24 hours a day. You know, We always have it running. Uh, so if you go in there and you see some old matches that you hadn't seen before, why don't you sit down and take a watch? Now, sometimes I have other things. I have video games. Because I am a video game fan, so I, you know, sometimes I play the games and I upload it on there, and so it can <clears throat> run through the course of the day. But again, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it is always up. It's always running. There's always footage there, and if it ain't, then I need to check into it because something's wrong. But, but there's always there. It's always going on. In fact, it's on right now. So uh, WPNWrestling.com. If you want to watch that, but back to the point of me giving it to you, it is the nexus of everything that we do. Uh, it is the focal point where you can see the footage of everything that has been shot with WPN for the last couple of years, ever since 2013. You can uh, also see the uh, the drop-off point for all the podcasts. There's a couple of profiles in there. I think I'm going to update that site you know, pretty soon, and i uh, try to streamline a little bit but everything that we got is all there including some blog posts that i wrote uh, a couple of months back i need to get back into my writing so uh, you know you have something that have more things that you can kind of interact with uh, when you go on to the site so that is uh that is everything folks again thanks so much for taking the time out to uh l- lend me your ear and let me do this podcast and uh, uh, talk about a little bit of wrestling, more specifically, a little bit of wild WoW wrestling, or women's wrestling in general. And I'll probably be doing, uh, you know, a little bit more space of that because I'm starting to watch Stardom and stuff like that. So you know, we'll we'll spread we'll spread the wings a little bit. And so, with that said, folks, this is Mr. Green saying that this is Mr. Green saying so long, and we will see you on the next go round. Take care, everybody. Thank you for listening to the WPN's Rights and Wrongs of Pro Wrestling. If you have questions or comments, please contact us via our Facebook or our YouTube channel at the Women's Pro Wrestling Network. If you're new to the WPN, feel free to subscribe to our channel and like our page. We appreciate your support. Thank you again for listening.